time they go to redeem. This was said by Reverend Esther by herself. This shows that she knows what is doing. That money that was used to build that church is from the kingdom of darkness. That all the activity that is taking place is from the kingdom of darkness. The presence of Pastor Adeboye is to portray the kingdom of darkness. Connections between him and forces of darkness. So darkness. We're going to call on Almighty God. Kill him before the sun rises. So recently, Pastor Ye Adeboye, leader of a very big congregation with branches all over the world, uttered some words to his congregation and asked them to follow suit. And this is coming from accusations of certain individuals tagging him as devil worshipper. In fact, you're about to hear more, not just what Pastor E. Adeboye said to his congregation. You'll be hearing more deep details and from who. And I want you to stay put from the beginning. Stay put. Do not go nowhere. Like and share this video. Tap on the subscription button if you are new here. Tap on the notification bell so you'll be first to get alert whenever videos are dropped. Tap on the thanks button to encourage us to do more. Let's get right into it. It started first with a Pentecostal pastor called David Biomi, whose spiritual father is Pastor Oyedepo of Winners Chapel. He said, white garment are diabolic and wicked and evil. Simply put, they do not belong to God. And this prompted some of the elders and leaders of white garment to utter statements that brought everything to this point. If you see me say white garment, they get angry. I know them more than you. I know them. We have worked out all workers. I know them. That's why they are angry. They, they know I know too. My story is like Moses. It's like who? Moses knew Pharaoh. He knew everything about Pharaoh. So when he came out, he said, Pharaoh, you know I know you. Let my people go. There's no white garment, my hotel. I know everything. I've been there before, so I know. If you like, let them get angry. I know. I know. The wickedness there is unbearable. So I've been there before, so before I became born again. I've worked out too now. Did I work out? Before I became what? So I get angry if people can deceive people like this. Because I've been deceived by them. So that's why you see me when I, I say, hey, stop this deception. Don't deceive people anymore. With the Christophobia and all these things. Let us proceed further. Prophet Tibeto, known as the Nostradamus of our time, spoke also in response to Pastor David Ibiomi, even giving him some couple of um, duration that he will pass away. And then, I'm sure the question that begs an answer is this. Why did Pastor E.A. Adeboe have to tell his congregation to make such a prayer? In fact, some are even saying that um, these utterances are kind of similar to those that people are diabolic, demonic, and all of that. This is how they speak. I want you to call on God that if Pastor Adeboe is contacting the devil one way or the other there's any connections between him and forces of darkness so darkness we're going to call on almighty god kill him before the sun rises so that he doesn't spoil your name. So he doesn't lead several innocent people to hell. 
Then you add to that prayer. Well, I want to ask you to add to I say, Father, Baba, but if this boy is using your power and your power alone, and the power they pay, and the father they pay, I can't already continue. Ah, then multiply that power sevenfold. So I can't right now be not to meet you. Let's stand on our feet. Help with them. If Diomi was a satanic prayer, church leader, you know he's emulating that. Uh, um, Oh, yeah, they pull, they pull, yeah, because they're all in a country. I mean, those days when he wanted to do his final meeting before he started making these mistakes, there was a church that fell in worry when he used people for ritual. The same thing, uh, the, the, the same death, premature death. Um, and, um, Joshua, to me, talk about die. That's how he's going to die. Because they are both his dream coffee club. Because when he used those people for ritual about three years ago, we don't have government that can arrest him. Celeste has been on before the battle for the deal, so we don't need to reckon with him. But imagine that we're alone. Some years back, Pastor Yeha Deboye visited Keribu and Serafo, a white garment church that belongs to a woman called Esther Ajayi. And this raised eyebrows in the church. But there is something that a lot of people do not know that the background or the foundation of um, RSOCG is actually Kiribu and Serafu. And um, according to what we heard, they say that um, the original founder of RSOCG, he found light in the Pentecostal movement and he decided to swap from the Kiribu and Serafu mode of worship and he eventually had it over the ministry to E.A. Ateboye. Now, we are about to hear a man, and you will be shocked. He said some things that I will want you to pay attention to. You, Pastor Adeboye, I know for a fact that you know what you are doing. You, Reverend Esther, I know for a fact you know what you are doing. You are not confused. You are doing the work of your father, the devil. That's all. But, you know, one thing, I do say it in my messages. Covenant is dangerous. Whenever there's establishment of covenant between two, they must never release it in the in the, in the open. That's the only problem. So they know in their in their kingdom they are covenanted with the kingdom of darkness. Pastor Deboye and Reverend Esther, they have a similar they have covenant together, but it must not be spoken in the open. So, but for us like this, that we hear and communicate with the Lord, and we hear on a daily basis which from the living God Jesus Christ, it cannot be hidden. Pastor Deboye, I challenge you again that you need to repent and turn back to Jesus Christ. And everyone in redeemed church God of God, I want to challenge all of you. You are going to have fire. I mean, this is obvious now that Pastor Debo is actually determined to take you to have fire. How do I know? Because he has joined you with Kerubi and Sirabu. He has told you that, yes, Kerubi and Sirabu are fine. In fact, Reverend Esther said it. He said many of them in redeemed church of God, they come to Kerubi and Sirabu for prayer. They wear white in the day, in the heat, in the in the night time, but in the daytime they go to redeem. This was said by Reverend Esther by herself. This shows that she know what is doing. That money that was used to build that church is from the kingdom of darkness. That all the activity that is taking place is from the kingdom of darkness. The presence of Pastor Deboye is to portray the kingdom of darkness. And is it not time for you, redeemed church of God, to think? Let us proceed further to a reaction that I also came across and. It is still on the same topic. Will God strike you down because you said so right in front of your church or not? Let's look at it scripturally. The question is, how feasible is that? Will God kill a man because he asks people to pray against him? Not really. This is like an atheist claiming God doesn't exist and that if he truly exists, he should kill him now. And then claim that if God doesn't kill him and he is alive in the next 20 minutes, that is the proof that God doesn't exist. Do you think that is a legit reason to know whether God exists or not? It is the same way you are supposed to treat this matter. I was actually on a Twitter space some days back debating whether heaven and hell was real. And Papi Koju, a musician in Ghana, was on that debate on and on that platform that day. And one of the things he made against the God of the Bible is that if God is real, he wants God to kill him. Kill him. He wants to give God his address. God should locate him. If not, God doesn't exist.
What's the come talk we know here before? What this? No, Papi, he's got two minutes. It's almost done. Make you finish. No, no, it's nonsense, bro. Get up here. We grow too much for this nonsense. If your God get power, make you come meet me. You know, be some guy from Amsterdam or wherever you get where you will come tell you about God. We nonsense this. Why are you saying you say you travel? Right, right, hold on. Hold on. You see, I see this statement of Pastor Adebo is similar to this one. Now, let's look at the question. Why don't I think God will kill him even if the whole world prayed that he's using evil spirit? Number one, even if he's using evil spirit, listen, even if he's using evil spirit and they prayed that prayer, he wasn't going to die. Why? Number one, God wants all sinners to repent. So his agenda right now is not to kill a sinner. No. Second Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but it's long suffering to us, world, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So, in the case where he is using evil spirit, I use it again. In the case, I'm not saying so, but in the case he is using evil spirit, he has consulted them, he's still not going to die. Do you get it? Now, first Timothy 2 4 says, Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? Ezekiel 18 23 says, Do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked? declares the sovereign Lord. Rather, am I not pleased when they turn from their ways and leave? So clearly, God's desire is rather that a sinner will repent and be saved than to kill them. So he's not going to kill them. Now, the second reason why I think this prayer is not going to work is that God is sovereign. Now, this means that he does what he pleases according to his will. And if whatever you are doing is not in line with his will that he has declared to us, listen, God is not going to mind you no matter how long, how loud, and how many of you pray. Well, what are your thoughts as regards this one? Um, you heard from the minister from Ghana, Boateng. He said that such utterances coming from Pastor E.A. at the Boye to his congregation does not necessarily mean that he is a genuine man of God. And if he is involved in occultism, such utterances is not going to create this instant uh, death or um, thunder will strike from heaven to take him out. He said that is not possible. And he made us um, go to the scriptures to realize how it works, that God is not anybody's uh, houseboy that you can just call and speak to and he will just carry out your wishes like oh you you belong to the kingdom of darkness i'm going to take you out now after all a lot of people have been praying in churches like mountain of fire shouting and screaming and um, requesting for the death of certain you know people that they um, deem to be witches and wizards and you know water possessed human beings who are frustrating their lives um, I have not seen a mass execution of these people. And I'm not trying to tell you that such prayers do not work. It depends on if God wants to answer that prayer or not. I've heard several pastors, prophets preach and talk about their own personal experiences where they have requested for God to take the life of someone who frustrated their life uh, whilst they were young, whilst they were still seeking the face of God, whilst they were still lost. And um, God would say, you know what? I'm going to leave this person. This person is not going to harm you. He's not going to touch your children, not going to touch your family. But I'm going to keep this woman or this man in this family to be a whip for others in that family or for whoever that I wish for him or her to touch so as to press them, push them, to me i'm sure it might sound a little bit um, weird to some people or scary to some people and some might connect to it what are your thoughts like and share this video subscribe to this channel see you in the next update